legendary investor Michael Burry is now predicting another huge crash. We all know that he foresaw the last housing collapse. He predicted the SPAC collapse that we've seen in 2022. And most recently, he predicted the crypto crash. And now he is so bearish about the stock market and the economy, he just came out with this tweet where he said, you have no idea how short I am, meaning the short position in his portfolio. I'm going to explain why he is so bearish in one simple, fast step. Let's get into it. Step number one, it's all about the bullwhip effect. Michael Burry talked about this a couple months ago, but now we're seeing it play out in real time, right in front of our eyes. Let's go to a chart here of Amazon stock going back to, let's say, January of this year, all the way to today's date. On the left, we go from $50 up to $200. So back in January, it was right around $200, maybe $180, $190. And then since then, it's pretty much gone straight down to where it is today, $97. You say, okay, George, well, it's definitely in a bear market. And you would be right, but let's look at the degree to which it's in a bear market. Amazon stock or the Amazon company is the first company to lose one trillion dollars in market cap. And this is a bellwether for the entire economy. Let's go back to 2019, where Amazon had about 800,000 employees. Fast forward just about two years after multiple rounds of stimmy checks, meaning free money that increases aggregate demand, gives the economy a sugar rush that is completely unsustainable. We fast forward to today's date and Amazon has 1.6 million employees. They have literally doubled their workforce just since 2019, a 100% increase. So you have to ask yourself why? Because of the bullwhip effect that Michael Burry warned about that we're seeing play out in real time right now in front of our eyes. So what is the bullwhip effect? It's actually very simple. All of these CEOs or just small business owners, they see all this demand come into their store, their restaurant or amazon.com. And they think that it's gonna last forever because they don't watch the George Gammon channel. <laughs> they don't understand macroeconomics. And they don't understand that all these stimmy checks that went out gave a boost to the economy or aggregate demand, but it was only temporary. And now what we're seeing is that sugar rush come crashing down, meaning the purchasing power of all of those customers is starting to decrease and go right back to where it was in 2019. The problem is, in my opinion, it's going to go even lower than it was in 2019, creating massive amounts of layoffs going into 2023. But we're gonna talk about that a little bit more throughout the rest of this video. Some actual numbers here. They just laid off about 10 or 11,000 people. Now I'm talking about Amazon. And this was a result of all of this hiring due to temporary demand. But it's not just Amazon, it's also Target that is falling victim of this bullwhip effect that Michael Burry believes is gonna take down the entire economy. Editor, let's cut to the internet to see what's going on with Target. Here's an article from CNBC titled, Target warns of soft holiday quarter as profit tumbles and sales slow. And when they mean tumble, they're not kidding. If we go down further in this article, we see that their profits fell by 50% in its fiscal third quarter. And unfortunately for Target, it gets a lot worse. The company said it plans to cut up to $3 billion in total cost over the next three years. 
Well, why? Because of the bullwhip effect. They hired way too many people because of the artificial demand created by the government. They also bought way too much inventory. So now what's happened is they're having to fire sell that inventory. They're going to take a loss on that. Their profit margins go down. And as a result, their overall profit, like we see, is down 50%. They're going to have to start laying people off just like Amazon. And that negatively impacts aggregate demand. Let's keep going. Target echoed many of the same themes as competitor Walmart. Consumers are feeling strained by higher prices for groceries, housing, and other necessities. They are buying fewer full-price items and holding out for promotions instead. To stretch their dollars, they are choosing smaller items, value packs, or retailers' own less expensive brands. You see what's happening is people are running out of money. They can't even afford to buy the same amount of stuff they bought in 2019, let alone 2020 and 21, when all of these retailers were hiring all these additional people and increasing inventory. And if you think that's bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. (laughs) Unfortunately, I always say in my videos, I warn people in advance, I hope you're sitting down and you've poured yourself that stiff drink. Because now it is stiff drink time. So it's not just the earnings or the revenue, the profits that are plummeting for retailers like Target and Amazon. But because their customers are getting so pinched by inflation and all these other dynamics, they're actually resorting to stealing the things they can't afford to buy. Right here from Target's CFO. He said Target is seeing a higher level of shoplifting, which has jumped about 50% year over year. Let that sink in, guys. Shoplifting at Target has jumped 50-50% just in the last year. So far this fiscal year, those losses have had more than a $400 million impact on Target's margins. I think that in and of itself could be a good reason why Michael Burry is predicting that we're going to have another economic crash. Here's another way to look at it that I really think will help you guys understand what's going on. So let's go back to 2019. We've got five of the average Joes right here, and we'll say they represent the entire workforce in the United States. Now, back then, let's just say that their average checking account balance or savings account and checking account balance was about 500 bucks. Okay, and let's just say their monthly income was about 1,000, their monthly expenses, about 950. So they've got about $50 at the end of every single month to put into that checking or savings account, but sometimes they have an emergency, so it always hovers around $500 as far as their overall balance. Okay, then we have 2020, and the government's response to the Cervasa sickness creates massive unemployment. But then they come in and say, well, we'll give you the stimmy checks. You don't have to pay your rent. You don't have to pay your mortgage or your student loan. So this dramatically affects their purchasing power. So their checking account or their account balance goes from 500 up to 2,000. Their income although there are people unemployed. So let me start up here. So we had five people employed here. Now we only have three because of the massive unemployment the government created. So these red guys here with the frowns on their faces, the red average Joes, they represent people who are now unemployed. Okay, now we go down. The average account balance, 2,000. The average income, even though these people are unemployed, has gone up to $2,000. Because the government, your drunk, insolvent Uncle Sam, is just making it rain free money. But unfortunately, we know that they screwed up all the supply chains by their central planning and authoritarian meddling in the real economy globally. So we had inflation skyrocket. So now the average Joe's expenses go from $950 up to $1,500. 
Well, this hasn't really impacted them negatively yet because they're still making more than they're spending, far more than they're spending compared to where they were in 2019, and they have way more in the bank. So what do they do? They go out there and spend a ton of money at places like Target and Amazon <laughs> and restaurants, etc. So then what happens is all these restaurants and Jeff Bezos looks at this. He says, wow, business is booming. My goodness, the economy is on fire. So what do they do? They go back and hire all the people that lost their jobs as a result of the government's response to the Cervasa sickness, i.e. lockdowns. Okay, so now they're in a pretty good spot. They've got $2,000 in the bank. Their pay has gone from $1,000 up to $1,250 because now we have a labor shortage in places like the local restaurant, the local dry cleaner, the local fast food joint, or Amazon are willing to pay their employees more money. But there's a catch. Now the average Joe's expenses have gone from $950 to $1,500, all the way up to $750. So in 2019, at the end of the month, they had an extra 50 bucks. But now in 2021, they've got a deficit of $500 because their wages have gone up, but the rate of inflation has gone up a lot more. But the consumer is still doing okay. They can still afford to buy the stuff they need because of this cushion they have in their bank account. But now we fast forward to 2022 and all the chickens are coming home to roost. Everyone is realizing there is no free lunch and all of the government intervention back in 2020 has just made things much, much worse. So although the unemployment rate is still very, very low, all these people are still employed by Amazon and Target, let's say. Now they're really burning through their savings. So their account has gone from $2,000 down to $750. Their income is still at $1,250, but now inflation is even higher. Prices have gone up more than they were in 2021 to a point where their monthly expenses are now $2,000, a delta of 750 bucks. So they start spending a lot less. And this is exactly what Michael Burry's talking about with this bullwhip effect. The retailers, the restaurants, the businesses, and the real economy are starting to see this. So they're getting rid of all this excess inventory and they're gonna start laying off a lot of workers. So we fast forward to what it might look like in 2023. Now the unemployment rate goes right back up to where it was in 2020, represented by the, the two red average Joes with frowns on their face because they've been laid off by Amazon, let's say. But unfortunately for the average Joes in aggregate total, their checking account or their bank balance is now at zero. Because remember, they got a raise increase, but it was nowhere near the increase of the prices of the stuff that they buy daily, i.e. inflation. So they're still making $1,250, but now their expenses have gone up even more to $2,100. So they're having to put all of their expenses on their credit card or literally go into Target and steal what they need to get by. And here's a little chart that I drew up just so you could get your head around it. We go back to 2019 to today's date. And this is just to give you the concept. This is not an actual chart. It's just one that I drew up. So wages represented by this green line went up to a significant degree, but nowhere close to as much as inflation went up. So the delta here is a loss of purchasing power for the average Joes in aggregate total. In other words, Americans. So let's think this through. If demand at Amazon goes right back to where it was in 2019, what are they gonna have to do with their workforce? Well, most likely they'll have to shrink it down to where it was in 2019. That means they're not gonna just lay off 10 or 11,000 people, but eventually 
moving into 2023, they're going to have to lay off 800,000 employees that they mistakenly hired in 2020 and 2021 as a result of the bullwhip effect. So if Amazon has to fire half their workforce, assuming this plays out, what does that mean for Home Depot? What does that mean for Target? Or maybe more importantly, what does that mean for the local small business on the corner, the cafe or restaurant that you like to go to every Saturday morning? They have to do the exact same thing. So that's how our unemployment rate in 2023 could go right back to the same levels that we saw during the Cerveza sickness in 2020. Only this time, it's an even bigger problem because we've got significant degrees of consumer price inflation that have taken the prices of what people buy daily up way higher than their current levels of income. So I think there's a very strong argument that aggregate demand could not only go back down to where it was in 2019, but could go down a lot further, especially when you consider the fact that people's bank account balance will most likely be far lower in 2023 than it was in 2019. And the problem is just going to get worse to where their expenses are going to continue to go up, but their incomes won't go up at the same level, decreasing their purchasing power even further. This is exactly what the yield curve has been predicting when we see the yield on the 10-year treasury actually lower than the Fed funds overnight rate. And this is why Michael Burry is predicting another huge crash. For more content that'll help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks and big governments, check out this playlist right here. I will see you on the next video.